Selling your dental practice is one of the biggest decisions you will make in your entire career. And buying that practice is the biggest. I'm thrilled to have with me today transition specialists who help dentists make these decisions with more success and less stress. DDS Match is an awesome key resource and sponsor of Dental Nachos. If you would like to connect with us, text by to 215-543-6454 to learn more or text sell to 215-543-6454. So welcome to our show. Please share with us who you are and what you do to help dentists. Yeah. I'm Todd Garfinkel and I'm a transition specialist with DDS Match. Um, and we cover the area of Maryland, D.C., and Virginia. Awesome. And I am Cheryl Garfinkel. I am Todd's wife, not <laughs> sister, and a business partner. And we live in Annapolis, Maryland. So for us, the area that we cover is a perfect situation to uh, take care of our dentists in this area. Awesome. And one of the themes that I've shared uh, is... Uh, one, my dream was to play professional basketball in the NBA. That dream failed because when you grow to this size and have this speed, you got to get new dreams. So this is my backup dream of bonding Dennis together. But the theme of these awesome podcasts with DDS Match has been team, not just the DDS Match team, which you guys are fantastic, but also the team of advisors a dentist needs to connect with to make these decisions, the point guard, the small forward, the center, if you will. So as brokers and a big part of this team, who else is on the team for your clients? Let's say with a seller, who else should they be aware? I need to connect with this person. They may have this relationship already. You may introduce them. Tell us about that team. Sure. Do you want me to go? Yeah, go ahead. Um, key piece is going to be a key, a key member of that team is going to be a lawyer, an attorney that's going to review the agreements once we get to that stage. So they might be involved reviewing the letter of intent, which is kind of the structure of the deal put into a non-binding quote agreement. And then they're going to be involved with in reviewing the definitive agreements. On top of that, the CPA, their CPA and financial advisor, key members so that they can kind of, kind of take a look at the, the financial pathway moving forward, what's going to happen tax wise to the proceeds from the sale. Um, you know, what's going to happen to their portfolio and their, their uh, retirement plan overall once those proceeds are, are injected into their investments. I think we should call it the, the D team, the documents and dollars team, right? They're the documents. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> well, and, uh, but... What I strive to do is help people learn how to connect with people. And I've been helping each DDS match broker how to talk dentist, right? How you can talk dentist to dentist. And one of the things I think is really valuable is, you know, when you say to a seller, you know, why do I need someone more than you? When you're doing a giant case for a patient, we work with a periodontist, we work with an endodontist, we work with an orthodontist, we work with specialists who do that thing every single day. And that will resonate with a general dentist like myself, that oh, I would not do this all on my own. And I think one of the goals of these podcasts is deliver education to my audience. And I feel bad, but dental school doesn't go over this. And sometimes, as you guys can see, people go their entire career without connecting with the right advisors on their team. So I appreciate uh, you guys sharing that with me. So tell us a little bit about how you guys do things differently, get better results. There's not a lot known about the broker space. It's truly wild. I've been a broker, I've been part of it, I've been a buyer. Uh, so tell us how you do things differently and get better results. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, one of the advantages we have, Paul, is that we're a team of two, mm -hmm. right? And we're not individually going out and helping separate clients we're teaming up batman and robin on each deal right and we both have areas of expertise that we've developed over uh combined 60 years in the dental industry not to mention my dad was a dentist and they're all awesome. um and and we're able to to really be more hands-on through the entire process than your average dental transition person or broker um, you know, we're, we take the time because we have the time to get to know what does the seller really want? What is their true ideal transition? How are we going to be able to make that happen in reality? Um, we work with, even though we represent only sellers, right? And I think you have experience with that dual representation yeah. model. Bad experience, but yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we're very specific to only representing sellers. I mean, we get approached weekly from buyers saying, hey, would you be willing to represent me but we focus on the seller 
but at the same time, we're taking the time with the buyer to understand, you know, who are they, educate them on the basics and, and, and the process, connect them with the right advisors, like, like you're such a great, great resource for, um, so that overall, the deal has a better chance of going smooth and uh, in the end, successful for, for both parties, right? We're, we're representing the seller, but we're really interested in a positive win-win kind of a, a solution. A I absolutely love that. I, I would say I, I interject with a brilliant idea, not interrupt. My wife says that. Just take my word for it. Uh, don't <laughs> but, um, love it. Uh, you know, I cost myself at least fifty thousand plus dollars and a lot of morale by working with a dual representation broker to buy our second practice. It was a hundred percent my fault, and a hundred percent I didn't know who to ask. You know, I didn't have a relationship with Rob Montgomery at the time, my podcast partner, someone I know that you know, a dental focused attorney. And I wish I knew, and I would have more money and more morale. And if it this just does this one thing, our podcast, it's ask your advisors who they're working for, whose team they're on, because Rob. Uh, I will give him credit for this joke. It is like saying I'm an Eagles fan and a Cowboys fan at the same time. And, you know, if someone said that, you would say that does not. Say I was rooting for the Ravens, though, in the playoffs. So I was. Thank rooting. You. Thank you. Appreciate um, it. So I think it's really great that we're just layering on this education, people giving these aha moments. I even have this one day. I want aha to sponsor me. I drink a lot of aha. The oh, aha wow. moment that you cannot have a broker truly representing two interests at the same time. But the end part is, and Cheryl, you can talk to me about this, is that you work with the buyer, you work for the seller, but you're working with the buyer. If a buyer happens to listen to this, even though you're not working for the buyer, and even though the buyer's not paying you, what are these with parts? Is it maybe helping them understand how to connect with banks? Is it understanding transition plans? Tell me a little more about that. Sure. So I think initially uh, we want to make sure that they are talking to banks, that they understand their financial uh, uh, kind of landscape even though they may not have a targeted practice in mind, we almost always say it's okay, connect with a few bankers that, that we trust and that we feel do a good job and that are good at communicating and we put them in front of them so that they have a good runway to make sure that they're prepared when it's time. Um, we make sure that they have a CPA and a dental professional lawyer. Um, I think it's really important that those team members are dental specific and that they understand the nature of dentistry. Otherwise, it may not go well if, uh, you know, Uncle Bob's a litigation attorney and and he'll take care of me. I just think that it doesn't allow for a, a good and smooth transition because really, even though um, the the seller is selling the goodwill the more important part is that the buyer is preserving that goodwill and that they understand that that process and having a good attorney and a good cpa and then of course understanding their financial landscape is is uh huge that's that's such great value and also you're probably annoying uncle bob to make them do your dental deal if they're not that attorney <laughs> right like like these people are like you're my family i guess you know uh i got to do this for you but it really you're just reinforcing, I would say I don't re re repeat myself, I reinforce good ideas because pain happens when you don't plan properly. And, you know, I've always described uh, the banks like they are the mom of the deal because when we were kids, nothing happened if your mom didn't say it was okay. And I've seen buyers and sellers talk and talk and talk and talk about treatment plan philosophy. And someone goes, does anyone have any money in this deal? And then the seller is frustrated. But I said, that's the question up front of working with the buyer. And I really think that that is uh, such a key point in this process. Uh, so we've talked a little about the synergy you two have working together, and I will set this up this way. Dentists go to dental school and we have to graduate. And then when we have to get licenses, we have to go to each state and get a state license. But the broker world is much different. So tell us about, with that sort of as the kickoff, give us some context around how you guys do things differently when compared to the average broker. You know, I'm going to go back to, to to really part of what I answered the previous question with, and that is that we're, we're lucky enough to have each other's back, right? So Cheryl's taking care of a lot of the operation side of things, uh, making sure all the T's are crossed, the I's are dotted, uh, walking through the specifics of the, the, the uh, definitive agreements with the lawyers, communicating with the buyers and the sellers about reports and needed metrics and bank communications and you know, uh, kind of making sure that we cover all the bases along the way. 
Um, I'm focusing more on the communication side of things, um, interviewing the seller and working with the seller, uh, interviewing the buyers. We spend good 30 to 40 minutes with every single buyer that comes our way to make sure we have a connection and that they kind of get the understanding of the landscape. Um, and, and I've always been fascinated by the business of dentistry, right? So I love the numbers. I'm reviewing P&Ls and, and working through the different aspects of, of financials. Uh, but to, together we overlap a fair amount, mm -hmm. but we also have our own kind of worlds that we work in. And that gives us a luxury to have the time to take care of people on a different level. The last thing on there is that because of that luxury, we choose to keep the number of listings that we have between 20 and 25. Because awesome. we've learned that over that, our bandwidth starts to get too thin and we're not taking care of people the way, way we think we should. Some people are out there and if God bless them, if they can do it, but they're running around with. Four I want to interject because I think that's such a key point. And maybe Cheryl, you can add it too. When I was, you know, a broker, you know, I've retired and I, I need to announce my official retirement on who's listening, but I, I, I'm moving from the coaching to the booth. Like the now the analyst, you can have the stressful job because the stressful part of it is you are front and center and one person's making the second biggest decision of their life, the seller. And then the other person happens to be making the biggest decision of their career. So there's so much emotion surrounding that. And there's timing of these deals. And you know, maybe you could tell me, Cheryl, one of the things I was surprised at was how much longer some of these deals took be than before I became a broker. You know, I just didn't have any context. I was like, oh, you just must buy a practice and you say you want to buy it on January 1st, and then you have it on April 1st. And I was uh, surprised to see. So maybe tell me a little about the timing and what maybe sellers and buyers should be aware of. Sure, sure. Uh, and I think, so to that end, I think that we set it up well to, to set some expectations of the pieces that are involved from start to finish. So in my, in my prior job, jobs, but in particular, I worked as a business manager for a couple different practices on the West Coast. That's where I'm from. And my my philosophy was you don't collect after the fact you collect ahead of time so you set the stage of what's expected and then there's not uh disappointment and assumptions or uh, understandings other than the reality so we try to do our best to take the time to set the expectation for the buyer set the expectation for the seller <clears throat> Early on, as soon as there is a letter of intent, I send my send my sellers what I call the homework list, which is yeah. basically all the pieces that are needed that'll be required before we close so that they have a runway, that they have the time, because usually the last two weeks before closing, it really feels like you're to them, especially that because of, as you noted, the emotion that they're drinking out of a fire hose. Yeah. Yeah. And so we. Um, I think to your question, though, it takes many, many steps to get from point A to point Z, and we do our best to educate them along the way. I have a pretty good dental background as far as the clinical and the business part of dentistry, being in a laboratory initially, and then being uh, in a dental office, and then doing consulting and training technology, etc. Um, so I can speak to the pieces that may not be understood by just somebody that decided they're going to be a broker and uh, don't really fully understand what it's all about, what Monday morning looks like after a hot, long yeah. holiday weekend, or why can't you call me or why haven't you gotten to this? You know, that sort of yeah, thing. Yeah, our grandmas are right. We're very special, the dentists. We're special people. We need special accountants, special brokers, special everything. And I say that and everyone laughs a little bit, but it also is true because the dental business is wildly complex. Todd, I'm going to send you one of these shirts uh, and you can have one too, so you have biceps and EBITDA because you like the business <laughs> of dentistry. God, you just got to, when you wear it, you have to cut the sleeves off. That's required. But um. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I'll just I'll just tear the sleeves up. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, one of the things I tell dentists to ask at any age or stage when they're going to go do something is not if someone's happy selling to a DSO or not, not if they're happy selling to a private practice buyer or not. It's you know what do they wish they did different earlier in the process? And I'll share for me, and I'll, I hope people hear this. I wish I hired someone 
to look at my practice numbers earlier in my career. I was actually very tuned into hiring a consultant to help the team get along. And that's a big part. 2010, early in my career, we hired a practice management consultant. How do we make each other feel? What kind of customer service do we give? But I did not pay attention to what were my write-offs with insurance? How is this working? And I wish I had someone analyze this for me sooner. So if you guys were telling a seller, you know, let's say you're retiring and you're riding off into the broker sunset, what do you wish sellers knew sooner? What's just something you say, I wish you thought of this sooner. You should think about this sooner. It could be starting the process. It could be P&L related. I always find that to be a valuable question to ask somebody who's an expert like you guys. That's a great question. So, yeah. you know, I think in general, it's true in a lot of parts of life that the sooner you start planning for something, generally the better it goes, right? So I think that even though some people, you know, <laughs> will be at a meeting, like a society meeting or something, and you can see people, they literally don't want to come near my table because they're afraid to even bring up the subject, right? Um, I'm not ready yet is the, the response. And and we look at it as, so listen, even if it's 10 years out, have a conversation, right? Yeah. Sit down and learn what's involved, what the landscape is, so you can start to prepare yourself a little bit for it. Now, if we're going to get really finite about what is kind of the, the, one of the common pieces that I hear sellers say, oh, man, I wish I had known about that before. I never even realized that was a thing, is negotiating fee schedules with insurance. Yeah, love that. That's so right. valuable. We have sponsors that do that. I mean, there's only one thing better than that, and that if someone took calories out of my favorite food. But besides that, I would want better fees for doing nothing. I did this. I had a guy in 2016 who was a consultant. Rob Montgomery introduced me to him. And he said, hey, Paul, you know, I could get you better fees with this insurance. And we are currently out of network fully. But it was an awesome five years. I mean, I say to Dennis, do you want to make more money for doing the same work? Because I call dentistry full contact arts and crafts on people that don't want to be there, right? It's yeah, very man. hard work. Amen. So your advice of starting sooner and negotiating your fee schedules, because that's a complex process. That doesn't happen overnight when you negotiate. But back to the starting sooner, and maybe you can give me some insight, Cheryl. I'm a general dentist, so I feel I can say this. Specialist, um, what is the right word for it? They tend to, I don't want to say do things better, but start sooner than general dentists in this process. I will explain. In 2018, I did a little seminar on how to sell your practice. And a pediatric dentist from New Jersey was there. And she said to me, I'm so glad to be here, but I'm not ready yet. But I really thought I should learn about this process. Okay. In uh, 2020, we listed her practice. I don't know. Did anything happen in 2020 that was interesting? Oh, yeah. The whole world shut down. And we <laughs> sold her practice. Three interested buyers got the price that she wanted, the person that she wanted. And it's all because she was ready for to do it. Right, and I right. think, you know, Cheryl, have you seen, let's just go this way. Have you dealt with some dentists who weren't ready? And how does that impact their sale? Whether it's from price, plan, staying longer. Tell us about that. Yeah, uh, I... I think that when a dentist is finally ready and they don't have the heart to continue doing dentistry for whatever reason, they're tired of just the grind, the, the insurance that they're, the monies that they're having to give up, the staff, whatever, whatever the case is, they, they've just lost the spark for dentistry and they have in their mind that their practice is worth X and at one point in time, it may have been worth X, but over the course of the last several years, they potentially lost a hygienist or they cut back a day because they were helping their failing mother or whatever the case may be. You know, there's always something. And now their practice is worth less. And um, the seeing that, like realigning their expectation with their reality and seeing that disappointment in them having to kind of come to terms with that is really disheartening for us because we always feel in our heart had we had the opportunity to talk to them maybe five years ago we could capture them at their height or right. with the understanding of what their trajectory is and then it then take them take a look at okay let's look at your p l how could we save some money are you using the most expensive lab are you yeah. is there is there excess in, in the things that you're you, you're spending monies on um what are your fee schedules like how much is your write-off there's just a plethora of things that they we could right. address and then they could exit 
in a way that they felt like they they won. I mean, the- I would say you're sharing so they have control. I mean, I'm a dentist and I can tell you how to scare dentists, aware of dentists and prepare dentists. Do you want to put the hand piece down on your own terms or someone else's terms? Right. Exactly. And exactly. I, that that doesn't mean as much to you two as people who are not dentists as it does to me, because I think, oh, my gosh, I want to put it down on my own terms, whatever you need. And, and it's sadly I see all the time dentists not putting it down on their own terms because they didn't connect with people like you to get just insight into things. They could, I mean, what you just shared there about the ins- negotiating insurance, super yeah. valuable. Someone's yeah. going to listen to you and say, hey, I should negotiate my insurance fees. Yeah. Yeah. And Paul, we we always, you know, commonly will say dentistry has been an incredible industry to be a part of, period. And we have no problem giving back. And and in fact, we love the part of this 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 career where we're educating people, you know, for us to have a conversation, 30 minute conversation with somebody who's thinking maybe five or 10 years out. And we it's not we enjoy that. You know, and, and for us to take a look at a PL, we can I can take a 15 minute browse of a PL and take a look and see, man, your supplies are way out of whack compared to the you know the average. Is there a reason why? Right. Yeah. And and kind of go down that road. Just make make get bring things to mind. Just get the juices flowing about, oh yeah, I never really thought about that. Or, you know, I haven't paid attention to that in a while, that sort of thing. I I actually love that. And you know, as we Sort of kind of bring to a good conclusion here what I want my audience to learn from transition specialist on DDS Matt sharing with us right now. Every dentist has a process for how they do a crown. Every dentist has a process for how they do an implant. And we're into our processes and systems. And I've really enjoyed and compliment DDS Match for having a responsible, uh, clear, understandable process. Because as a buyer, I've dealt with brokers that don't have a process. I've dealt with brokers that have lied to me. I've dealt with brokers that have misled me. And I'm really proud to be involved with you guys. And I know you have this trusted transition process. So if someone's listening saying, hey, I want to get involved, have a conversation. What parts about this process mean so much to you, help you bring be- about better results? Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll say a little bit and let Todd kind of springboard off of that is for me, I think that it, it, it's not only um, a guideline for the buyer and the seller, but it's also a guideline for us. It allows us to know that we're doing the same thing each time, that we're not missing a step, that we're covering the basis for, especially for the seller, because um, you know they're our client, but this is a, probably a one-time event for them and they have no clue. And, and we do this every day. So it kind of allows us to have a checks and balance to say, hey, we've covered this with you, we've explained this part, and now we're ready to step into the next process and the next and the next until we get to closing. So the other piece of it too, is I think that it allows us to have an integrity of, of, I hate to, I'll use the word honesty, but I think just making sure that everything is upfront, setting the expectation. And as Todd will often say to a buyer, if I know it, you're gonna know it. Love we that. Have- I think that the best what you're sharing with me, if I was your perspective upon either again, is very transparent. And mm-hmm. you know what I would ask you, Todd, and, the, and I know the answer to this right um, interviewing many of you, but uh, people say nothing's 100% in life, but there's two things that are 100%. Okay. One, I've never met a dentist who's worked four days, gone down to three days, and ever wanted to go back to four. Never in my whole <laughs> life. Okay. That's never gone the other way. Okay. Never want to go there. They may have been forced the other way in associate right. move. But that's 100%. And the other 100% is every buyer doesn't think it's worth as much as it is. And every seller thinks it's worth more. But you guys do something pretty special with the valuation. So I'd love for you to share that with us as you wrap up. Because I think it's one of the most key parts to the, whether you want to call it the transparency, like you said, or honesty. Tell us about how you guys do the valuation. Thanks, Paul. Um, We utilize, to to come up with the value of the practice, we utilize a third-party um certified valuation team it's part of blue and company accounting they're they're one of the top 10 healthcare accounting firms in the country and they have a team of guys and gals that focus solely on dental valuations and this is not um an appraisal and there's a difference in that terminology an appraisal anybody can do i can do an appraisal my uncle bob can do an appraisal the seller can do an appraisal this is a valuation based on guidelines and certified, you know, the rules that the certification gives out. 
that they uh, abide by. So they're looking at it from a neutral perspective. Now, why we think that's valuable is number one, it's going to give a picture of the true value of the practice, right? It, it, for whatever given region and area that happens to be focused on, because we're the feet on the street that can give them that information. But two, the buyer can be um, uh, confident that the, the value that was arrived at was independently found, not by us or the CPA for the seller. Um, but took into all the all the pieces into account and documented them and is willing to stand behind it and certify it with, you know, with their signatures, literally. Um, I, I don't, I, you know, I think it, it adds to the complete transparency that we subscribe to, right? It's kind of the, the cream on the cherry on top. And that's where, you know, there's, it's great because it's that that part is data driven, right? It's data driven. You know, there's there are feelings driven. The team will they stay? Will they not stay? The patient, some of those things. The goodwill, you know, is not all you know data driven. There's feeling driven. When you come to this thing, hey, we've looked at these numbers and this is what's happened. And I I think it is the best part or one of the best parts of the process, because whenever I'm in these worlds, the buyer saying why is it so much, the seller saying it should be more, and you're able to get this. Um, collaborative arm's length away to say that. And, you know, uh, I I am kind of retired from buying, temporarily retired from buying dental practices, but I've never had some, a DDS match broker share that with me as a buyer and it would immediately inspire confidence. And then in your sellers, you get to manage their expectations too, because I've dealt with sellers sometimes. That, I met people once, uh, this is a true story. Went to the practice, husband and wife, brought in $600,000 a year, met them. I just said, oh, hey, like, what would you want to sell this practice for? The person said 800000 And I said, well, it's usually not sold for more than 100% of collections. He goes, but I, they could do so much endo. And as you guys know, we probably were off to a rocky start in that discussion. So I think <laughs> I wish I had that. And I think I compliment you guys for that. As we are up, is there anything else you want to share with our audience to leave them with uh, before we finish? Geez, I, I just think we're both thrilled. I think all of DDS Match is thrilled to be partnering with, with you and, and, and Dental Nachos. I mean, it's a great group of people looking, looking at it from the right perspective for the right reasons with the right values. Um, you know, we're, we're here as a resource. We're, we look at it as a resource and a point of education first um, before we look at the money and, and, and chase that. That's not our, our motivation. And you know, I think as you, you've experienced with, with meeting mo many of us at DDS Match, um, you know, our, our, our primary focus is to take care of people and create a transition, not a transaction only. Love that. That is, that is a great way to put it. You know, this is a transition. People are involved. Your future is involved. Your past is involved. Your presence is involved. Well, that, Todd Cheryl, thank you so much for sharing with me. I want to share with my audience. You can text by to 215-543-6454 to learn how to connect with Todd and Cheryl. You can text sell to 215-543-6454. Together, we're going to help these dentists make these decisions with more success and less stress. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you Thanks. so much. Thanks, Bob.